and Stephen James McNeil. I'm running for District 9 Councilor. And today I thought we could do a do-it-yourself project together. So I have a material right here and it's outdoor fabric. And what we're going to do is just line it up on the table here first. Just bring it right to the edge. Now, I've pre-made a cutout, and I'm going to trace it onto our fabric. And as you can see, I just lined it right up with the corner, and I'm taking a fabric marker, and I'm just tracing it along. And now I'm going to proceed to trace the same pattern. There we go. And as you can see, we now have our pattern for which next to cut it. Alright, I have here my fabric scissors. So all I'm going to do is cut along the lines uh, where we've already marked off with the fabric marker. We're all finished with our cutout, so we're going to move on to our next part. We're going to use our Cricut machine here to print off heat transfer vinyl, and then we're going to attach it to our fabric. So I've already put the design in, and then we're going to go over and we're going to make it, and while it's printing off, we're going to move over here and do some sewing. Alright, we're on to the next step. And what we're going to do is just uh, thread the machine here. So I'm going to put the spool on top and make sure that the thread comes from the back. And we're just going to follow the steps. Every sewing machine is a little different. So we're going to have one, two, three. Hook it around here. And then we just use the hand wheel to adjust for number four to make sure we get it right in the hook there. Come down. And we're getting to the pinhole spot and what I do is I just cut the thread to have a nice point to push through the hole here and just use two fingers and there we go I pulled through now we're going to move into our bobbin and I had the bobbin here all ready to go and now what we're going to do is you can take a look here, there's a little hook where the thread goes for the bobbin. So we'll put the bobbin in, and then you just have to make sure it goes in that little hook there, up and around, and then we'll just take the lid for the bobbin or the lid for the bobbin cover and put it on there. Alright, great. We'll move on to our next step there. As you can hear the cricket in the background. Normally we'll be doing the sewing and the cricket at the same time, but just for the video, while we're going over what we do for the sewing, we won't have the cricket, but for efficiency, we would have both going at the same time. We're on to our next part, which is the sewing. So we're just going to start from the tip of the fabric, and we're going to do a nice little fold over. Come up here. So we're just going to make sure the fabric is folded over straight and we're going to line it up and we're just going to drop down the feet, a little hook in the back there. Straighten up our fabric there and now we're going to take our needle and bring it down through and as you can see it's made a little hook there with our bobbin thread down the bottom. Now we're going to slowly apply pressure to our pressurized foot pedal here. Pressure started off there. We're going to hold down the reverse button just to make sure that we got a little starting hook. And as you can see, now we're going to move forward and just going to maintain a nice steady pace there. Start 
starting off and now we're going to speed it up as we get going. And what we're going to want to do next is all sides of the fabric. So it'll be the same process. We'll fold it over, put it under the feet, lock it down, make sure our fabric's nice and straight. So what we've done here is after we finished uh, the four sides, the very top we want to allow for a space. Um, so what we've done is we made the fold over an inch and a half. And as you can see, and we've lined it up the same process, and then we just sew it. This is our finished product from that section. And as you can see, all four edges are sewn. And then we've taken our top and we've put it down an inch and a half. And we have a little uh, spot there. Alright, great. So we're going to move on to our next section, which is going to be with uh, Cricut. Now that the Cricut's finished printing off, we're going to take the piece here and we're going to do what's called weeding. So what you want to do is just take the corner and with your little weeding tool, you're going to put it into the vinyl. And I like to try to get it right up under that corner there so you can pull it back. And once you get that, you just have to start slowly pulling off the material from the cut. And it's just going to take a little bit of time. You want to be careful not to rip anything. And then you go up to the top and you just weed out the little sections there in between the letters. Okay. And then if you find you have a corner, it gets stuck, just take your tool again, flip it back over, and get right back at it there. Okay, I'm ready for our next step. But first, we're going to iron our material before we apply the vinyl. So we'll grab what we've already sewn. Oh, hello there. And here's my little assistant, Tony. Now we'll head over here, and we'll just, I've already got the iron on. We'll spread out the material and just make sure it's nice and flat and on a nice surface. Now that we've finished getting off uh, all the vinyl from our pattern, we're going to come over here and line it up on our material and then we're going to grab some parchment paper. And then we're going to start applying the iron. After applying the heat and the iron, you take off the parchment paper and then you're just easily able to pull, pull off the protective layer of plastic. Now we're finished with this section here, but now we have to go to the workshop and do some more building but with some actual wood and then we're going to put our two products together. Follow me out to the workshop. Hey folks, welcome to the shop. Our next portion of this project is going to be building the frame for our material. But first, we got to get ready. Follow me over here. Now, we've chosen your standard 2x4 for our material. Easy to get. But first, uh, before we rip it down uh, into the size we want with the table saw, we want to check over our wood and we're looking for things like the stickers over here or any staples that may have been left in the wood by the manufacturer. So get out our tool and we'll just start taking these out here. Once you pop out the piece, one of the easiest ways to get it out is to actually just roll it over and as you can see the staple will come right out. Now that the staples have been removed and the sticker has been taken off, we're ready to rip our wood through on our table saw. We've already determined that our width is going to be 1 and 1 8 and we're going to set that up on the table saw. So you just line it up, give a little blow so you can see and we put it there right on one and one eighths and we lock it down. 
here in our shop, uh, our pack system currently is a mobile one, so we move around to each piece of equipment before we start the cut. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Alright, we have our gate all lined up. I put my gloves on for safety, I have my safety goggles on. I'm going to turn on the back system and then I'm going to run the wood through the cut. We're only going to show this once just because of the noise and normally I put earphones in but just so I can talk to you today I'm just going to leave them out. So uh, here we go. Now that we're done ripping the wood through, you can see what our final product looks like. And what we did was once we were done with the first through, we reset our size to three quarters of an inch and ran the through the pieces again. So that we ended up with six full length pieces. So what we're going to do now is take them over here to our miter saw. So we've decided to cut these at four feet. So what we're going to do is take our tape measure and we're just going to take it and put a little line right at the mark and then what we want to do next is put a little X on the side that we're not going to be using. This way we know to bring our saw blade down on this side. Now that we've finished cutting our material down to size we're ready to move on to the next piece of machinery, which is going to be the drill press. But before we do that, we want to measure where our drill press is going to touch down. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one inch and a half down from the top. And we know by dividing one and one eighth in half, which is nine sixteenths, we're going to get our center point. We're here at our drill press. And what we're going to do is line up our bit right with our little mark that we measured out there. Once we're lined up, we're just going to use our hand to fasten in place. We're going to get our drill press up to speed and then we're just going to slowly make it a little bit. Now once we've made it about three quarters of the way through, we flip over our piece and as you can see the bits made a perfect little spot for us to line it up with. Same process. Now that we've finished up with the drilling you can see there might be a little piece left in. Just pop it out and there we have it. A nice centered hole and we're ready for our next section. We're here with our material and what we're going to do next is just turn the bottom part, the part without the hole, into a little spike. So what we're going to do is angle our saw and we're going to go over to our farthest angle, so we're about 50 degrees, and we're just going to line it up and at about half we're just going to cut it down. We're going to flip it over, same angle, cut it down half, and we're going to be all finished up. Our next step is going to be the exact same process almost is the step we just went through uh, ripping the wood except this time we're going to have to make our strips about three quarters inch by three quarters inch and 14 inches long so we're going to do that right now rip the wood cut it on the miter saw and get it ready for our next section after that and this is the next piece for our project and this is what we're left with after running it through the table saw and then cutting it to size with the miter saw. Our next step with it though is going to be using the sander. And what we're going to want to be doing is making this square part suitable for the hole that we cut into the wood. So after we're done sanding, what we're left with is just a small wedge. And what we're going to do is attach this wedge to our hole. So first, we're just going to take a little wood glue and we're just going to apply it about a quarter inch down from the tip there and then we'll just spread out a tiny amount of it just so it's not in clumps there. Okay. We're 
gonna line it up in our hole there. And we'll just carefully use our mallet. Just tap it in. And we'll just make sure it's nice and secure. Excellent. Now we're gonna use three quarter inch brads and our brad gun. And all we're gonna do is on the back side, which you can decide, we're gonna shoot two brads. Here we are with our finished frame. What we're gonna do next is add the material that we had previously sewed inside. And I brought one out. And what we're gonna do is just line up that hole from before. And as you can see, we have a finished product. I want you to know that they've been all handmade. Not only have they been handmade, we've thought about the future. Once the election is finished, you're going to be able to take off the flag and go to the dollar store and purchase yourself any flag and quickly and easily you're able to have a new product for yourself. You can paint the frame and turn it into your own little design. So this way we're being environmentally conscious, we're not wasting any wood and also I get to honestly thank my supporters and I'm so grateful for anyone who believes in me and so thankful that after the election you'll be able to keep this. So if you're out there and you see one and you want one, feel free just to send a message on Facebook and we're going to make you one. Thank you and have a great day.